on this. The last one is the continued detention of Unambikano. I think Amnesty should also take a major position on it because there's a particular international criminality involved, which is extraordinary rendition of person. He was abducted in Kenya, put on a plane to be in Nigeria without legal representation, and it's unacceptable. And I say this because we are here fighting for Palestinians. There are some of us that are still fighting for Okalan in Turkey. It's also a self-determination person. Why can't we be very clear about the injustice done to Unam de Kano? Is it because he's touching on a topic that all of us are comfortable with, which is the unity of Nigeria? But I think when it comes to amnesty, there should not be boundaries over fundamental rights. And that's where I will stop today and I continue to wish you well in the course of uh, setting an agenda for a government that is deaf. Sorry to say that. Thank you so much. See, um, there is one thing I want people to know. You see, Buhari, I see Buhari as something that was projected against Nigeria. Let me tell you why I say so. The time when Buhari was the former head of state, it was on that say, this same Buhari that Nigeria economy crashed. And apart from that, there is something that happened when he was the head of state. This was Sophia's brother that uh, the prosecutor at that time. Do you know that before Buhari came to power, some three guys committed one offense. Now, in the Nigerian law then, that offense was just, the highest punishment for it was to send them to prison. Then after they served their time, they will be released. But do you know what Buhari did was that Buhari came into power. Of course, it was actually a drug offense, drug offense, yeah. So when he came into power, those people were already in prison. When he came in, he made a decree and changed the law, said that, okay, anybody caught with drugs will be killed immediately. Now, do you know what, uh, what happened is that for Buhari to make sure that those people did not leave, he backdated the decree. Like, backdated it to go and capture, to start from the time those people committed that offense. Buhari is still alive. Go and ask him. He backdated it to the time when those people committed the offense, even before he came to power. Just to make sure that those people were executed. And they were the first three people that were executed based on that particular decree. You see, I don't want to talk about also the fact that under the same Buhari, he was the one that went to London and put somebody inside the crates to bring him back into Nigeria, to rendition the person to Nigeria. And he was exposed. He even hired a specialist from, from, from Israel to, to help with the medical assistance and everything, to bring somebody from UK in a crate, put the person inside the, inside the aeroplane hold to bring the person back into Nigeria. UK noticed that they arrested the people and broke ties with diplomatic ties in Nigeria for two years. What is a curse? Like, see, anybody who actually supported Buhari to come back as Nigerian president and, has, and also went further to support Tinubu to become president of Nigeria today. Just know that you are caused. Like, you, you, you are, there, there is something, something they follow you from your village. And that thing don't really get you. 